Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for um, braving the weather, or rather, perhaps braving the uh, media's forecast of the weather um, this evening. It's uh, a great pleasure to have you here, and uh, I would like to welcome in particular uh, Marnie for being here with us today. We've come to celebrate the life of Lincoln Macaulay Alexander, who passed away just over a week ago. An absolutely remarkable man who touched the lives of many. From a string of firsts in his life in public office to hundreds of thousands of people that he met and talked to, Lincoln was a political figure. He was a giant of a man, quite literally who had a place in his heart for everybody. For the past week, Link has been lying in state in Queen's Park and in Hamilton for people to pay their respects. They even lined the Link Way, the road named in his honor as the funeral cortege made its way back to Hamilton. He made an incredible impact on people's lives and today we have the opportunity to remember him for all that he did here at the University of Guelph and for the city of Guelph. Lincoln Macaulay Alexander was born in Toronto in 1922. His early life reflects the circumstances common to black people in Canada at the time. His father worked as a railway porter, his mother a maid the only type of work that was expected for people of color at that time. They worked hard, and in particular, his mother, May Rose, instilled in him a need to stay in school and get an education. Despite memories of a happy childhood, his family disintegrated, and Link and his mother found themselves living in Harlem. For the first time, he was not the only black face in a, he was not the only black face in a sea of white faces. He witnessed firsthand the vibrancy of African American culture and the effect of endemic racism in the black community. He returned home determined to succeed, and despite the tragic loss of both his parents at an early age, set himself on a course for a new life. He served in the Royal Canadian Air Force and met a young woman, Yvonne Harrison, who Link said formed the rest of his life. Like other veterans, when he came out of the Air Force, he was offered money, money to be spent either on housing or education. Link, of course, followed his mother's earlier advice and chose education. He graduated from McMaster and later from Osgoode Hall as a lawyer, starting down the path that would eventually lead to his life in public service. Perhaps it was a portend of things to come. Link was the only black student in the Osgoode class when he graduated. And when he became a lawyer, he was one of five, five black lawyers in the whole of Ontario. He joined a law firm in Hamilton and then in 1968 was successfully uh, launched into a political career. Against a tidal wave of Trudeau, Trudeau mania, Lincoln Alexander was one of the very few conservatives elected and the first black man to be elected to parliament. From our vantage point today, it's hard to imagine the difficulties that he must have faced but in his characteristically blunt way, Link was very forthright about the fact that virulent racism was a fact of life for his parents, and it bred in him a boundless dignity and a determination to change that. Inspired by the achievements of Martin Luther King Jr., Lincoln set about establishing a number of firsts in Canada and stands as a beacon, not just for black people across this nation, but for people of every creed and color anywhere facing adversity. Link used to tell the tale that he stood up against the Dean of Law at Osgoode when the Dean made a racist remark to the class. He could be forceful when he wanted to be, but Link's real secret weapons were his charm and his irrepressible charisma. 
No matter what situation he faced, his endearing smile and his sometimes off-the-wall comments disarmed anyone. At the funeral uh, on Friday, we learned from David Peterson that when he met a group of predominantly white farmers at a plowing match in the middle of rural Ontario, Link's first remarks to them were, man, now you're my kind of people. Or when walking into the Board of Trade, he would say, are you making any money yet? <laughs> How could anyone be standoffish or awkward when faced with the smiling face and the charm of Lincoln Macaulay Alexander? Link became the first black uh, cabinet minister and eventually the first black lieutenant governor of Ontario. And then when he'd finished that term, he became chancellor of the University of Guelph. Why Guelph? Well, Link always gave the same answer to that question as he did to the question when people would say, why did you become a member of the Conservative Party? He'd say quite simply, they asked me first. <laughs> he had no previous connection with the University of Guelph, but as with everything he did, he put his heart and his soul into it. He became the longest serving chancellor and without doubt, our most beloved. Eventually, he served five consecutive terms and remained as Chancellor Emeritus until he passed away just over a week ago. Link had a magical ability to make you feel special. When he spoke to you, time literally stood still. For that moment, you and absolutely no one else seemed to be the focus of his attention. And it didn't matter whether you were at a small or a large event, he just made you feel special. Even at convocation, or perhaps especially at convocation. How many people remember the words that he spoke to them as they crossed the stage? I've been waiting just for you, he would say, to reassure a timid young lady nervously coming onto the stage. Or to a white boy or girl with the same last name as him, Alexander, He'd take their trembling hands, look them in the eye and say, that's a good name, we must be related. <laughs> or to the student from the West Indies, he would give an extra special hand squeeze and say, I'm relying on you, you know what I mean. He had a special message for everyone. When Link passed away, we set up a website for people to visit and share their stories. There have been more than 15,000 visitors to the site and some amazing personal stories and reminiscences are recorded there. He literally inspired generations of students, and you will begin to understand the true extent of his impact if you read the posts and the stories that people wanted to share. On the occasion of Link's 90th birthday celebrations, my predecessor Mordecai Rosansky said that Link always, and I quote, championed what is right and moral, and always modeled respect for the worth of each individual. Above all, Link was a fierce advocate for the transformative power of education. He understood how education could open doors and change lives, as it did his. And he fought relentlessly and courageously to help others overcome barriers of intolerance and access." End quote. Through his standing as Lieutenant Governor, Link hurled himself into patronage and support of the arts, culture, sports, and of course, education across the province. He served as the head of the police service in Toronto and had numerous buildings, schools, and even a roadway named after him. And there are three awards here at the university that bear his name. The Lincoln Alexander Outstanding Leadership Award, the Lincoln Alexander Medal for Distinguished Service, and the Lincoln Alexander Chancellor's Scholarships. And of course, there's Alexander Hall. Link will be remembered not just in the hearts of those people he met, but now in the very fabric of the University of Guelph, as people walk through and work in Alexander Hall, or are named to the various awards in his honor. From those early days, pushed by his mother, Link always believed in the power of education. He even called his biography, Go to School, You're a Little Black Boy, in memory of her words that were clearly etched on his soul. 
After the sad death of his wife, Yvonne, Lincoln continued in public life unabated. But there was something missing inside. He yearned for companionship and company. And then he met Mar Marnie. Introduced by a mutual friend, they just hit it off from the start, and after a few years of being together, were married. Marnie, your devotion to him in hospital was truly something incredible to behold. Sleeping in a chair at night, night after night, just to be by his side. There's no doubt in my mind that what you did for Link not only extended his life, but more importantly, allowed him to carry on being Link till the end. And over the past week, you've done more. You have been gracious to everyone, standing on your feet for hours on end to greet every single person that came to do Link honor. But of course, that's exactly what he would have done. It's exactly how he would have acted. And I know he would be proud. Link would have loved the state funeral last uh, week in Hamilton Place. He would have laughed to see so many heavy hitters present from all walks of life. He would have been pleased that people had come to see him, to send him off. But perhaps most of all, he would be proud of his granddaughters in the very public light of a state funeral, the love that Lincoln had for his family, especially his granddaughters, Erica and Marissa, shone through. Their touching grief added a real personal touch to the funeral proceedings and gave us a glimpse of the importance of Link's family in his life too. Lincoln Macaulay Alexander has left an indelible legacy on the people of Canada and Ontario, but especially on the people at the University of Guelph. No matter when or how you came into contact with Link, he left an unmistakable impression. He inspired people to dream. He made people laugh with his wicked sense of humor. He fired people up with righteous anger. He showed that you can bring dignity to all of the work that you do. And above all, he showed that in one generation, you can change everything. And he did it by making everybody feel so important. For the past week, tributes and stories have poured in. People lined up to say goodbye and pay their respects. They stood in the rain as the coffin passed. They came to the state funeral in Hamilton Place. And you've come here today. This is our way of returning the love and care that he heaped on us. It is our time to say thank you. It is our time to reflect on what this great Canadian has meant to us personally, to the university, and to the country. Thank you for being here tonight. I'd like to invite um, some special guests here this evening to come forward and uh, give some remarks. I'm going to invite Liz, Liz Sandals, our current um, member of provincial parliament, to come forward, and then our mayor, Karen Farbridge. And then I have letters to read from Frank Valeriat, Michael Chong, and um, our current chancellor, um, David Mervish. So, Liz, would you like to come forward? Thank you, Alistair, and I'm so pleased and honored to be able to uh, offer a few remarks. Um, I, I didn't arrive at Queen's Park until long after Link had uh, left Queen's Park, so my recollections of him are really mainly centered around the University of Guelph. But uh, as uh, Alistair said, he was very much a political figure, but by the time I met him, he was also a nonpartisan figure because it didn't matter who you spoke to, what their party affiliation was, what their political backgrounds or their political philosophies were, Link was loved and respected by everyone. Uh, he, he was fascinating to talk to because he had seen so many different political occurrences over the years that he always had interesting twists and a, a witty analysis of whatever happened to be going on when you ran into him at dinner. He, he had a, a uniquely link 
uh, perspective on whatever it was was the political controversy du jour. But I think the, the uh, and he, he never gave up taking on causes. The one that he took on, uh, actually the Queen's Park part of his political cause was his love of heritage buildings and his advocacy for the Ontario Heritage Act. And he would show up in the members gallery and you would see Link there. And of course, everybody would go up and pay their respects to Link. Uh, and he could have sat up in the, uh, in the speaker's gallery. He didn't have to sit down in the member's gallery, but if he sat up in the speaker's gallery, he wouldn't have been able to shake hands with everybody. And everybody who came up to shake hands got a little lecture on how they should vote on this bill that he cared about. Uh, and that included everybody, opposition and government. They got instructions from Link. Uh, but where he really uh, shone was a, at convocation when he got to speak to uh, every graduate. And when you were sitting up there beside him on the platform, or you got to eavesdrop. Now, my personal favorite was, of course, when our daughter graduated. And somebody, and this was actually before I was MPP, I was sitting down in the audience at that point. And uh, somebody had clued Link into the fact that somehow Sandals went with McNaughton. And he knew, he, he knew my parents. So as Alice and our daughter came across the stage, he grabbed her by the hand and wouldn't let her go, which of course sort of, oh my God, what did I do? He said, now you turn around. Your grandmother is sitting right there. You turn around and you smile so she gets a good picture. <laughs> but my personal favorite was sitting next to him one day and this young lady came by and she really had a huge diamond and he grabbed it her by the hand and he looked at it and he said wow that's some rock you got there I hope he's as good as the ring <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you, if you uh, were to check in with students from every graduating class they all share those memories and I think that's why he's so beloved, was his ability to connect with each and every person that he spoke to. We'll miss him. Good evening. It's my distinct honor to bring condolences to the family and friends and colleagues of Lincoln Alexander on behalf of the city of Guelph. Lincoln was well loved, um, certainly nationally and in this province, but most definitely in this community. Much has been written and spoken about his life, um, both before his death, which I think is a good thing that we speak about people um, before um, and certainly um, after in the memorials. Um, we are humbled by a life that was well lived. His contributions to our country, uh, the province, our community have been uh, recognized in the, in the naming of many facilities and, and Alistair has spoken to that. There's been many awards, honorific medals and degrees that have been bestowed upon him to celebrate his service. Perhaps there's just one legacy left, one in which we can all participate, to aspire to the same dignity, integrity, service, compassion, justice, graciousness, and generosity that defined Mr. Alexander. Goodness knows it's a bit in short supply right now in our world. Um, and it just got a little bit less. So um, as I was watching the pictures flip by earlier, there's a wonderful quote from Oscar Peterson that I think sums up that sentiment. And I think that's his final legacy that he gives to us and which we can carry forward. So thank you very much um, for the opportunity to say a few words, Alistair. So I have a, a letter here from uh, Frank Valeriot, the uh, member of uh, um, Parliament for Guelph. Um, a week ago Friday, a statesman, innovator, and lifelong educator, the Honorable Lincoln Alexander, passed away. 
I wish I could be with you today to mourn our collective loss and to remember the life and legacy of Link. However, my duties in Parliament compel me to be in Ottawa. Know that I am there with you in spirit. Another great statesman, Sir Winston Churchill, once said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Lincoln gave a whole lot. In fact, his whole life was dedicated to service, to his country, his community, to every man, woman, and child. They looked up to him as a trailblazer and a role model. Lincoln left an imprint wherever he went on whomever he met. As late as last year, I can recall speaking to Lincoln at the rededication of the new Lincoln Alexander Hall. And as always, he was warm and disarmingly charming. He made you feel unique, important. He made you feel like you were the center of his world and he was a man of integrity with a depth of character that for the moment you likely were. His loss remains significant but so long as we live well and foster the values of determination, excellence, inclusivity, we will honor his legacy and he will live on. And a letter from Mike Chong. Um, Distinguished guests and the community of the University of Guelph, regrettably I am unable to be with you tonight as my duties in the House of Commons require me to be in Ottawa, something that Lincoln Alexander would have understood having served himself as a member of Hamilton West for 12 years. I first got to know Lincoln Alexander through Conservative Party politics and later during his time as Chancellor of the University of Guelph, when we participated in several university events, including the official opening of the building that now bears his name, Alexander Hall. Along with all Canadians, I am saddened by his passing I also, however, took the time to give thanks for his life. We owe a great debt of gratitude to this remarkable Canadian. Lincoln Alexander was a trailblazer. In 1968, he became the first black elected uh, MP to the Canada's National Parliament, and in 1979, the first black appointed to the federal cabinet. When he graduated from Osgoode Hall in 1953, he became only one of five practicing black lawyers in the whole of the province of Ontario. My generation owes a great deal to Lincoln Alexander. He blazed a trail so we could follow. As a fellow conservative, he made my party more inclusive and open to people of all backgrounds. As a fellow member of parliament, he broke through barriers to ensure that our national parliament reflects the makeup and diversity of Canada. As the son of Chinese and Dutch immigrant parents, I sit in our House of Commons because I was able to stand on the shoulders of giants. Lincoln Alexander was one of those Canadian giants. Canada is a better place for Lincoln Alexander, and I am honored to have known him, and we as a community have been enriched by him. May we live his ideals and his love for Canada, and may he rest in peace. And now I'm going to do something that technology and uh, willing I will be able to do, which is to read a message from um, uh, David Mervish, our current chancellor. Um, but you need to forgive me, although the technology brings it to my um, BlackBerry, um, the fact that I didn't have glasses today exactly. means that it's a challenge, so I'll borrow mine. Perfect. Lincoln would love this, wouldn't he? <laughs> no, actually, they don't help. <laughs> but thank you for the offer. Uh, dear Alastair, I am sorry that Audrey and I are unable to join you to pay tribute to the memory of Lincoln Alexander. I would be very grateful if you would convey this message tonight at the memorial service. Lincoln was a friend to so many people, myself included, and he had a profound effect on my family's life. He could say just the right encouraging word that gave my son pride in himself and made him stand a little straighter. I know that his love of the University of Guelph and his eloquent, eloquent ambassadorial pride in the university made me feel lucky to have the opportunity to be part of such a special institution. 
Link was fortunate in finding the support of two exceptional women, and I know how important that can be when you step out in public uh, and the person at home knows your good points and your weaknesses and is there for you. He loved sports and the theater, and I had the good fortune to spend time with him in both venues. It is indeed a life to celebrate. I know that I have big shoes to fill. Unfortunately, his was size 14, and I only wear size 10, but I'm looking forward to trying to fulfill uh, those shoes. David Mervish. The choir will now um, uh, sing a small interlude, and uh, then uh, three individuals will come and read extracts from Lincoln's book. That was beautiful, thank you very much. Hello everyone, and special hello to you, Marnie. I'm Chuck Cunningham from Communications and Public Affairs, and it's an honor for our Lincoln Alexander Chancellor Scholar, Sophia Oki, our Associate Vice President for Student Affairs, Brenda Whiteside, and for me to be here tonight to read from Lincoln's book. I was really proud of being associated with the book project with Link and with Alistair uh, and with Herb Shoveler. Uh, Herb was brought on to assist Lincoln with the writing, and he landed from his new home uh, outside of Paris, France, about three hours ago, and is with us here tonight. So welcome home, Herb. I should also tell you the story about, and I was telling this to Marnie at dinner tonight, 
how Herb was selected to help uh, Lincoln on the book project. Uh, the Chancellor indicated to Alistair and myself he needed some assistance and we better pick someone good. So we sent this new writer who just moved to Guelph to meet with Lincoln, Lincoln at his home in, on Proctor Avenue in Hamilton and uh, waited and I waited and I waited and I was very nervous as to what was going to happen to Herb and suddenly the phone rang and it was Lincoln and he said that shoveler fellow, he'll do. <laughs> and he did do well. Lincoln agreed to the project in part because Alistair motivated him to do so. But deep down inside, I think he knew he had to share his story, a truly great and remarkable Canadian story, one that had to be told, and it was time. I will also say that Link didn't mind the royalties he received from the book, and would often call me and say, Chucky, show me the money. <laughs> I'm going to miss those calls. Just before the book went to press, Kirk Howard, the owner uh, and publisher with Dundurn Press, uh, called me and indicated that he and his editors thought that uh, the title, Go to School, Your Little Black Boy, was much too long a title for a book. I said, don't worry, Kirk. I'll speak with Lincoln about this, and we'll come up with a much shorter title. So tonight, we read three passages from Lincoln's book, which is titled, Go to School, You're a Little Black Boy. <laughs> Lincoln on Racism and Politics. Racism continued to be something I tackled as the need arose. In 1978, while a member of the opposition, I told delegates to a black history conference in Toronto that it was essential to get involved in politics because there is a greater opportunity to fight successfully for change from the inside. All the marches and meetings and street corner protests in the world will take you only so far. Whether at the local, provincial, or federal levels of government, I argued that you must go where the power is and become part of it. Some agitators call that selling out. I wonder if those people really do want change or if they thrive on confrontation. You have to be where the influence is, or as Link would say, you have to be with the, the movers and the shakers and the heavy hitters. You must aim, <clears throat> you must understand the aims of all political parties. It doesn't matter if you're liberal, conservative, or socialist, so long as you're involved. I can appreciate that some people don't like the system, but in order to improve things, you must understand what they are about. I never address politics or anything else from a feeling of inferiority or as one who is sold out. No matter your color or your religion or your sex or your name, you can say, well, if Lincoln Alexander did it, I can do it too. That is what I hoped would be the feeling taken from my success. It means that everybody has an equal chance, provided they work hard, believe in themselves, and have confidence. Sophia. Before I begin, I do want to say that I cannot think of a, a bigger inspiration to me personally, and I know I speak on behalf of so many students here who are just phenomenally impressed by what, um, what Alexander Lincoln has done, and Lincoln Alexander, to be more professional, <laughs> but he was such a, a figure that really whatever people were doing and people were excited about, he also was excited about, and I, it's an honor for me to be here and to be able to read an excerpt from one of his stories, from his great book. Now, this passage is titled On Education. Shortly after I stepped down as Lieutenant Governor, I got a call from the University of Guelph inviting me to become the school's chancellor. It was an honor to be asked by then president, Brian Siegel, and I happily accepted. I really didn't have to give a lot of thought to the decision. Given my educational beliefs, it seemed like a natural fit. It also gave me a platform to continue my advocacy on behalf of young people. When each of my three terms as chancellor started to wind down to a close, Mort Rosansky would approach me and ask me if I'd consider another term. I'd toss up the odd obstacle here and there and really question myself as to whether there was anything more I could offer for students. 
but he knew in the end that I would be more than honored to hold the post and to be chosen regularly with full Senate support. At one point, he even got down on one knee, as if to propose, even though we both knew that I'd be happy to come back for another term. Anyone who knew him personally, knew me personally, would know how exciting I found it to be surrounded by so many young students. That's why I love events such as convocation. I feed off the energy and enthusiasm. The edge of anticipation is truly contagious. Many of them have told me I've inspired them, but I can assure you that such inspiration is a two-way street. They have invigorated me by giving me a privilege to serve them, work for them, and most importantly, dream with them. When I attend convocation, I feel as though I'm sitting there as witness to the future of our country, or even our planet. These young graduates, and I'm referring to all of the young, bright, college and university graduates, with a particular bias to our own students, are brimming with promise, and I'm very proud to be involved in such a meaningful way, sending them off to take on the challenges of the world. As university graduates, there comes a certain responsibility to make a difference in the world, make a difference by advocating for a better world, and that is a decision that is one of equality and making sure that there's freedom from intolerance. At every one of these events, from convocation to casual meetings with students, I am freshly reminded of, the, of what education has meant to me. And I firmly believe that I've taken a great gift of learning and used it to make a difference in this world. Thank you very much. I'm Brenda Whiteside, um, Associate Vice President, Student Affairs, uh, here at the University of Guelph. But to Lincoln, I was his beetle. Um, I was uh, Secretary of Senate for most of his term, and I carried the mace, who, and that we are entitled the beetle. So I would always um, come into convocation, and, and Lincoln, his voice, would say, the beetle has arrived, we can now begin, as if somehow it was me and not him. But that was Lincoln, you know, that special connection he always had uh, with individuals. So um, I am so honored to be able to read from his book. And I'm going to read on friends and family. I'm sure it's impossible to go through life without regrets, but one of my greatest disappointments is that my mother never witnessed any of my accomplishments. I felt that disappointment most acutely at times such as when I was stepping down from my successful run as Lieutenant Governor. She died even before I finished college, and yet it was her philosophical gem, go to school, you're a little black boy, that powered me toward all that I've achieved. As I look back on my time as Queen's representative in Ontario, I think I enhanced the image of the province and the country by my deeds and thoughts, though there's always remains much to do. I wish I had the power to fully change the world, for if I did, I would make people learn to respect one another. It's as simple as that. We have to understand that we are all seeking the same thing and that we have a lot in common. We want to be loved, we want to raise and protect our children. We want to make good lives for ourselves. Rather than focus on our differences that tear us apart, we need to sit down and talk and explore our similarities. Too many people don't know their neighbors, the one across the fence or the one across the border. We have lost a lot of wonderful people because we have not recognized them because of their race, religion, or sex. All superficial reasons for not seeing a person's true potential. It all begins with respect, whether it's among friends or strangers. Respect is everything. I remember telling a young couple who had just become engaged that love is a great thing, but actually respect transcends love. It holds everything together. If you respect people, you won't hurt them. Friends and family have enriched my life. They have helped me become the person that I am. They have helped me make a difference. What might that difference be? A feature story in the Hamilton Spectator analyzed the short form of my name that people often use, link. That article compared it to the word link, and it said its definition was a connecting structure and a torch used to light a darkened street. I liked that. I intend to continue to be that torch right up to the moment that I take my last breath, for there is such fulfillment in doing the right thing.
Thank you very much. For those of you that didn't know, that was Link's favorite um, hymn, and uh, apparently he would be heard hooting it out um, on more than one occasion. We all have um, personal memories of Lincoln, um, and uh, I have the privilege of being able to share mine. Because in 2003, in this very building, uh, Lincoln Macaulay Alexander um, installed the seventh president of the University of Guelph. In response to his charge that I should steer the university, I decided that I would quote my favorite poet, Walt Whitman. It talked about the journey that um, the University of Guelph and I hoped I would be going on over the next several years. And I realized for the funeral that there was a strange completing of the circle because those same words apply to Lincoln as he set off on a new journey. So I'd like to um, just read those words. Sail forth, steer for the deep waters only. Reckless, O soul exploring, I with thee and thou with me. For we are bound where mariner has not yet dared to go, and we will risk the ship, ourselves, and our all. But perhaps much more significant are the lines that Whitman penned for another Lincoln, another great leader, when he wrote, Captain, O oh my captain, your fearful trip in this world is done. Lincoln, your love, your dignity, your determination to treat every single human being as the most important in this world will remain in our hearts and in our minds. Captain, oh my captain, farewell. Know that you have left behind a legacy of change and tolerance that will never be undone. And each of us here today, and those many people, many, many people whose lives you have touched, we pledge to carry in our hearts your courage and keep it in our souls forever. This is a celebration and so we need to turn to song, I think, to um, conclude this part of the evening. And the choir will um, sing again. And then we're going to show a film um, that was created especially for the funeral um, because it uh, speaks so beautifully to Lincoln and his life. At the end of that, um, please stay and uh, share memories if you wish to. Um, but uh, be safe on the way home tonight. Thank you very much, Martin. Mm -hmm.